and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to invite you to a wonderful fundraiser with a great cause to help the uh, Peninsula Food Bank. My guest is Michelle Benson. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I was telling you beforehand, I have been to Tastefully Yours, but a long, long time ago. This event has really grown, hasn't it? It really has. We're up to, we have anywhere from 15 to 1,800 people attend this event. And it's gotten, as we discussed, it's gotten so large. We used to be upstairs at the Hampton Roads Convention Center, but now we are downstairs in Exhibition Hall C, so we have plenty of space to decorate and have lots of restaurants and invite lots of people. You know, one thing that's really fun is when you can go to a fundraiser and you know your money's going to a good cause, but you're also getting your money's worth yourself. It's like it doubles your money. <laughs> you give some of it, but you also have a really good time and eat great food and all that. Yeah, you do. You know, this event, it, it's top notch. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm very biased, but it's a great event. Um, it's called Tastefully Yours. We have 40 restaurants participating this year. Holy cow, that's it, way grown from when I went. Yeah, it really has. Um, and there are 40 really good restaurants. So your ticket price gets everything involved with the event is included in the ticket price. So you get food tastings from these restaurants. We're also featuring craft beer and wine. Oh. I know everybody Wonderful. loves craft beer, and I, I had no idea how popular it was. I learned last year. Yeah, it's not my thing, but it is the thing. I, I'd stick with the wine personally. That's exactly craft right. Craft beer is just exploding in popularity. It is. It's extremely popular, and we, we're, we're ready. You know, mm -hmm. we've got um, the domestic beers will be there as well. I have to mention that because people do love those as variety. well. Yeah, a great variety of beers, and, and people love it. And we also, you mentioned that you love wine. Last year we tried something new, and it was so popular we're increasing it to two this year we have a bubbly bar mm -hmm. barefoot wine participates with us and they um, make sort of a it's still wine but they add juices and things like that to it with a little bubbly concoction and it's really really good and very popular how fun yeah. that sounds wonderful you have music we do. We have a live band playing. We um, What we do is we play jazz. The band Forte is going to be there, and they're going to play from about 6 until 8, and they are just phenomenal. I can't say enough good things about them. So it, it's it's still a very fun atmosphere, but you've got good dinner music, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So as you're going around and tasting the food, you can enjoy their music. And then at 8 o'clock, we did have requests for a little more dance music last year. So, so it amps up as the evening. <laughs> it does. From 8 until the end at 9.30, we're just going to have strictly DJ, clone Neil DJs is coming out and we're going to play dance music for all the partiers that want to stay a little later and have a great time. It sounds like so much fun. When is it this year? It's April 2nd. It's at the Hampton Roads Convention Center. That's a Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to kick off your weekend. That sounds wonderful. Well, now let's talk a little bit more about the food bank and what this might. First of all, how much do you raise and then what does the money go to? Okay, great. This fundraiser, this is our largest fundraiser of the year. We raise over $100,000 at this event. Wow, that's great. It's, it's a phenomenal night for us. Of course, it takes a year to put together, but it's yes. a great night. Yes. And for every dollar that we receive, we can provide four meals. And the goal is to provide as many meals for people in our community as needed. You know, um, in the state of Virginia, the Virginia Peninsula Food Bank, our territory here has the highest food insecurity rate of anywhere in the state. And what that means is people are not getting enough food to leave a no lead a normal, healthy lifestyle. And so our job is to help those people. And, you know, those are people who may not be getting assistance regularly. But insecurity means, right, they're not really sure that they're going to get their next meal. It doesn't always mean that they're hungry. It just means they need help in the cracks. They're falling through the cracks to some extent. Absolutely. There's a lot of people. The people that we serve, they're either underemployed, which means they're just not making enough to pay their bills, or you never know. People have hardships that come up in life. They right. have a medical emergency, or the they have their car breaks down, and that is extremely expensive. Right. And when you're on a very regimented budget and you're going paycheck to paycheck, to have something like that occur, it, it's devastating. And so we kind of fill the gap where they need the assistance for you know a month, a couple of months, three months. You know, it just that's the majority of the people that we're helping. And again, you all are not necessarily directly always helping people. You do have some direct service to clients, but you have a network of agencies and nonprofits and churches mm -hmm. that you give the food to and then they can help distribute it. We do. You know your food. <laughs> <laughs> 
volunteer <laughs> well there. Well done, Robin. <laughs> for day of caring and different things like that. Oh, so. well, thank you so much. Yes, that's exactly right. We have almost 200 partner agencies. Most of them are faith-based. And they come to our food bank, and they shop for the food. They pick it up, and then they take it back out into the community. I mean, our service area is is large. It's and so huge, yeah, yeah. we don't have enough employees to drive up to Gloucester and to drive up to Matthews and Williamsburg. And those areas are just as important to us, but we need those agencies to work with us to get the food from us and then take it back out into the community. Right, and when you're talking about people who need food, they don't have discretionary income to drive to your facility and, and to get what they need. They need those agencies in their neighborhood who where right. they can walk and pick things up. and. You know, it's just, it's a wonderful business model that you guys are the central agency. We are. We are the warehouse for all of it. And and thanks for bringing that up. And there are things that we do internally right at the food bank. Mm -hmm. um, again, food going out into the community. We have our Backpack for Kids program. We have 27 sites that we take backpacks to, and we pack 1,450 backpacks every week for 30 weeks during the school year. That's a lot of hungry kids. That's a lot of hungry kids. We also have our Kids Cafe program. Again, I don't know how this worked out, but we have 27 sites. And we prepare over 1,000 hot meals a day at our food bank. And then those meals go out to our Kids Cafe sites, mostly boys and girls clubs, YMCAs. They're after school sanctioned programs where the kids already go after school till their parents get off work. But they're guaranteed a hot, nutritious meal every night that they're there. You know, I think. One of the things that I was always stunned by when I worked at the newspaper is that you could put, you know, a picture of an abused or a starving dog on the front page of the paper and everybody would get very upset. But they didn't always tune in to that same thing with people. But, but when you're talking about kids or people who need food, it's hard to um, have a hard heart. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, the kids are our future. And studies show that if kids are not getting enough food, they're not focusing in school. So they're not learning the way that they, they can be and the way that they deserve to. You know, they deserve every chance that they get. And, you know, parents, they work hard to put food on the table. But again, if, if a hardship occurs, they need to help to get by. And we're there to help those children. So we can do that by buying a ticket to Tastefully Yours. And how much does that cost? The tickets are $45 in advance and $55 the day of. So I love to tell people for that one $45 ticket, you're helping to provide 180 meals across the greater Pennsylvania peninsula to someone who needs it. Wow, wow, that's a lot, you know? You guys really can stretch those dollars. We do stretch them, and, and $45, it, it's just not a lot. When you think about 40 restaurants, you get your craft beer and wine are included, you get uh, the, the live music, you get the DJ and dancing, we have casino tables, a little mini Vegas area set up so you can have fun there. We have a silent auction where you can bid on items, you know, that's always fun. People love mm -hmm. to compete. We also have photo booths that will be set up in the corner so you can get together with your significant other or friends and, and dress up and do goofy pictures. That's always fun. Yeah, it is. So really, your, uh, your, your sponsors are providing the event, essentially, or my $45 is going to the organization, or however you work it out. But it does feel like I'm getting my $45 worth and donating it <laughs> as well. You, you absolutely are, and we really appreciate it. I'm glad you mentioned our sponsors. We had um, 13 new sponsors this year, so I'm just so excited that people in the community have really rallied around this event and are participating. And our presenting sponsor is the Disabled American Veterans Thrift Stores. We're so grateful to them. And then Bayport Credit Union, Ferguson, and Smithfield are also three of our, our grand sponsors. And without all of our sponsors, we could not put this event together. So we're just so grateful to all of them. Well, and it shows you what a regional event it is, too, when you think of where those companies are based. I mean, some of them have multiple locations. But mm -hmm. Smithfield, actually, Smithfield has been a pretty generous contributor of goods and money to the food bank um, in other ways, too, haven't they? Oh, they are. They're, not only do they help us tremendously financially, but we are very blessed to get Smithfield product donated to us pretty much on a weekly basis. And it's phenomenal. We all love Smithfield. Who doesn't love Smithfield? Right. And it's phenomenal product. And so they, you know, again, not only help us financially, but we actually get food in that 
our agencies can come in and take back out into the community. And that's, you know, kind of the most expensive thing is to be able to provide meat and protein um, can be a real challenge um, for your organization. Well, it really is. And, and we're so grateful to Smithfield for all of their help and to all of our retail partners that donate food to us. You know, our goal is to get as much nutritious food out in, into the community as possible. And, and it, it's hard to do that. But because of our partnerships, we're able to do that and we're getting better. We're getting much more produce out into the community. And it's called a Foods to Encourage program. Now, see, now I'm going to start talking about healthy eating. And, <laughs> and so it isn't just filling their bellies. It's filling their bellies with the right kind of food, with enough protein, with right. enough fruits and vegetables to, you know, enable them to grow up healthy, to pay attention in school, to not have increased health costs. There's so many things that go into eating. <laughs> it does. It all ties into healthy eating. And, mm -hmm. you know, childhood obesity is such a problem in our country. And we really, along with giving people, you know, and, and making sure they have a healthy meal, we also try to educate people on healthy eating. And so they can learn at a young age how to do it and hopefully take that into their future adult years because it, it's just so important. It is. Okay, well, before I um, get off on a tangent, let's come, <laughs> let's come back to the event. And do you have anything else you want to say that I've forgotten to ask you about? Well, I just want to let people know it, it's a great, it's well worth the $45 ticket. Again, it's on April 2nd at the Hampton Roads Convention Center. It's and that's a Thursday night, so you kind of go roll right after work. You don't have to cook. It's a, it's a nice thing to do during right. the week. Start the weekend early. Kick it off with a fun party. Um, it's at the Hampton Roads Convention Center, and you can get tickets. I should tell you where you can get tickets. Yes. Please go to hrfoodbank.org. You can order them online, or you can stop by the food bank at any point or any Bayport Credit Union location, and you can get tickets there. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, I appreciate Robin, thank it. Thank you. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wait, now, if I buy my ticket, how many meals am I providing? You have to do the math for me. I'm not that bright. A dollar is four meals, so a $45 ticket is 180 meals. Okay. So you heard that out there. Come and get your ticket. Support the food bank. Your donation gets you a wonderful um, evening of food and drink and dance and also provides 180 meals that stay right here in the community for people who need them. Thanks for watching.